In this lecture, we're going to discuss cylinders and the stresses that are induced when there are pressures in the cylinders. So let's consider a thick-walled cylinder first. And let's consider there's an inside pressure pushing out and an outside pressure pushing in. If we consider that, there, there will be three stresses that affect the elements within the cylinder. The first stress, so let's consider a, a point within the cylinder. The first stress would be a tangential stress. The second would be, would be a radial stress. And the third one, if the cylinder is closed, will be an axial stress. And all of these, and the axial stress would be working into the page. <clears throat> and all of these would be um, orthogonal to each other. And although the vector of the tangential, radial, and axial stress will change for a given element, um, for any given radius r, the value um, of the tangential, radial, and axial stress will be the same. So let's look first at the tangential stress. The tangential stress is given by a constant term. So you can see the inside pressure, the inside radius, outside pressure, outside radius. As well as a term that has r squared. So the important part of this uh, equation is right here, this r term. Um, and as r goes from ri to r out, we'll have a, a profile of tangential stresses that looks like this. So notice the maximum tangential stress occurs at the inside surface and the minimum occurs at the outside surface. Now if we have the special case where there is no outside pressure, then the equation simplifies quite a bit and now we have this 1 plus RO squared over R squared. It's just the reduction of the original equation. Let's consider radial stresses. The radial stress has the same constant term, but now it's subtracting the variable term to give us a compressive distribution. Notice still the maximum stress occurs, or the maximum stress state is going to occur at the inside edge. It's now the maximum compressive stress um, of the radial stresses that are occurring within the cylinder. And again, there's a simplification if the outside pressure is equal to zero and the formula uh, the equation simplifies quite a bit. If the cylinder is closed, then there is an axial stress that's not equal to zero. If the cylinder is open, then the axial stress is equal to zero. But for closed, thick-walled cylinders, the equation is just the constant term. And it turns out for any radius, the axial stress is the same. But again, we can consider if the outside pressure is equal to zero, and the equation simplifies quite a bit more. So as a review, we can look at thick-walled cylinders and notice that the constant term for the tangential stress and the radial stress is the same, and the variable term in tangential we add and in the radial we subtract, but the, the number that we're adding and subtracting is the same. And again, the worst case is occurring on the inside edge of the cylinder. And again, if it's closed, we have an additional term that's the axial stress. And then if we make the simplification for the outside pressure, the equations simplify a little bit for us. Now, sometimes we can consider the walls to be thin. So let's take a look here at the outside radius and the inside radius, and let's say that the thickness is defined as the outside radius minus the inside radius. I also can talk about an average radius. The average radius would be the outside plus the inside divided by 2. And then I can say I can have this criteria and if the thickness is less than about one-tenth of the radius, we can consider the cylinder to be thin-walled. If that's the case, looking at the equations, they'll simplify a great deal. We'll say that there's zero radial stress and that the tangential stress is just PR over T. And then again, if it's closed, there's an axial stress and that's just PR over 2T. Now the question might come up, what R should I use at this point? Do I use the inside radius or the outside radius or the average radius? 
And the question is, it depends. If you're trying to be conservative, then you're going to be estimating that the pressure is as high, the stress state is as high as possible. To do that, you would use R out. That would be the largest value. So that might be a good way to consider, although the whole point of a thin-walled cylinder is that whether you use R out or R in, it's not going to affect the pressure a great deal, or the, the state a great deal. So let's review. We, here we have a stress state, and there are three types of stresses. There's the, ten, there's the tangential stress, there's the compressive radial stress, and then there's the axial stress going into and out of the slide. And we can see by um, definition that the tangential, the axial, and the radial are orthogonal to each other, which means they are the actual stress state. And I can even draw a Moore's diagram, and we can see um, the uh, sigma R is probably will be compressive, sigma A will be in tension, sigma T will be in tension. And there is the stress state of that particular element. And again, the worst case, the place I need to consider for failure, will be occurring on this inside edge.